Well, good morning. Welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Merry Christmas. We are the day before Christmas Eve, and we thought we would show you the update of our kitchen and all the renovations that we have finally completed. All right, so we are probably a solid 99% finished with our kitchen. We moved into this new home. It's not a new home, it was built in 1975, but we moved to the new homestead and have continued to try to settle in and do what uh, we need to do to update and change things as we wanted to. Uh, we started renovating the kitchen, if you will, about a year ago. And so I'm gonna show you some before and after pictures. I'm not sure how I'm gonna make this video. This has kind of been a slow progression, but there's a reason I did it that way what are those reasons? So I'm gonna take you through a quick progression of our kitchen and how we've changed things, what we've added, what we've painted, what we got, you know, whatever we kept. And I'm gonna to try to talk as quick as I can because there's a lot to say. We have a lot of questions from you guys. And so I wanna just pan around and show you clearly things have changed. You're gonna see some before and after. Uh, I'm gonna make some suggestions. I mean, it's just by my own experience. I'm not a home decorator. <laughs> I'm just kind of a homeschooling, homesteading mama, but I know what I like. It's just a matter of getting there and it's a matter of staying in a budget and making decisions that work for you. And let me say this right now, when you do anything like this, do your thing. It's very frustrating to try to go after exactly what someone else has done because it's not your stamp, it's not you. I spent a lot of times, uh, a lot of time looking at so many pictures all through this and that or the other. And just doing this one step at a time, one or two changes at a time, that allowed me to keep what I feel is some authenticity in terms of what I like, who I am, what we do, and you know, keeping it real. Okay, so when we moved into the home, this kitchen was literally from 1975. Parts of it still is. I wanted to keep the cabinets. So this is where I'm going with this. If you're gonna be doing anything in terms of renovating or changing your room and you're on a budget, look around and see what do I need to keep at least for now? Or what is my main base that I'm working around? Obviously, it was the cabinets here. I, we went and got quotes on new cabinets, and okay, we don't, we don't do cabinet work, okay? So, long story short is we knew in doing this that we were going to have to have help. We were gonna hire somebody, buy new cabinets, whatever, whatever. Well, we started getting quotes. I'm gonna shut my lazy Susan here. You don't wanna see all my junk. <laughs> so, it was too expensive. I was not willing to spend thousands of dollars on cabinetry at this time. We had too many other things that we wanted to do, add to the farm, you know, budget, budget, budget. So I started looking through pictures and getting ideas. Do I wanna keep the cabinets in terms of the color, which I liked, but they were a little beat up. I mean, the cabinets are in good shape, but they were a little beat up. So first things first is I got rid, before I decided to paint, the biggest eyesore in the kitchen was the fact that we had this massive microwave right here. Ugh, old, filthy, you hit, I mean, it was, it came down to like right here. I couldn't even put a canner on my stove, whether I could can or not is irrelevant. You couldn't even hardly fit it, okay? So my point is, is I knew I wanted to get rid of that, <clears throat> open this space up and go from there, open up the space. We also got some new appliances. We knew we needed a new dishwasher. We knew that we needed to get a new refrigerator. Now here's the thing, the reason we chose the ones that we chose is not necessarily because of budget, it's because certain sizes had to fit. So we started with the nuts and bolts. Okay, we're keeping the cabinets, okay. We need to start changing out some of the appliances. That is where we started. I also knew that I was going to attempt to put in a wood cook stove of some size, of some sort in the kitchen. So I knew I wasn't really going to do anything on this wall, okay? This is the original wall. Um, you could put a little table over there. You could, I had a baker's rack there at one time, whatever. But I knew I was going for Emmeline, our wood cook stove. 
She's worked out great over there. So I, I knew I was going to have to leave this area alone. We talked about knocking out the wall at one point and turning the stove that way. Again, money is a reason to not do that. But I will have to tell you, I wanted to keep my little dining room, which is on the other side. I, I decided I liked it being separate. I like being able to go in there and it's its own element with my, my own things in there. So we decided to keep the wall, but keep, don't touch it until we knew what we were doing with the wood stove. I've decided for now to keep this light. I've looked at enclosing it, doing some drop pendant lights, but to be honest with you, we just got a new cover on it. It works for me. The lighting isn't beautiful and perfect as far as filming videos, whatever. This is real life. So we decided to leave that. It's working for now. I don't need anything in the way as far as hitting my head any more than I already do. So <laughs> we decided to leave that, but we did add this little pendant light over here and we had to literally drill <laughs> into the cabinets in order to plug it in because here's the deal. The way the soffit is in order for us to put in a light and I love this little pendant light. I got it for $21 on Amazon. In order to make this light work, we had electricians come out. As far as having a switch, we were gonna have to start tearing into the soffits. I wasn't willing to do that. So Mr. James, Honey Bear, made that work perfect. We just plug it in right here, no big deal. $21, works for mom. Okay, so if you remember, I had a flat surface stove that was right here and I wasn't going to change her out. We started having a dilemma on, okay, I knew I was gonna get a new countertop. I mean, I, I, I needed a new countertop. It was really beat up and the color, I mean, I know it's vintage and all that stuff, but no, I really wanted to replace it. We looked at every material made by man or nature. And I'll be honest with you, the reason you see this stainless thing right here is because this is my workspace. So I don't have a lot of countertop space here in the kitchen. So I wanted something pretty, but I didn't want to break the bank and I didn't want something that if something really terrible happened, something got dropped or whatever, that I was going to be ruining a $5,000 countertop as opposed to a $700 countertop. Everybody's asking, I just want to let you know, this countertop, and I know I'm moving around a lot, so just bear with me. This countertop is by Formica. And it's one of their, like, I don't know, can't remember what it's called. It's like a deluxe series. It's a newer one. Um, it's a special order. And this is Dolce Vita. I think that's the name of it. Let me tell you, I went to multiple Lowe's and Home Depot's and I never saw this sample. And we just happened to go to a Lowe's up in North Knoxville off Clinton Highway to pick up something, a special order. And I just got nosy and started browsing around over there and their samples were different than the other Lowe's or Home Depot's. They didn't have the samples out for you to see in this particular one. I don't know if that's because of COVID or whatever. And not only did I see a sample of it, but it was a big sample. It wasn't one of those little tiny squares. It was like a six by six or something. So, and it had a beautiful pattern on it. So all the samples that you see for countertops, make sure you get multiple ones. Look around for different ones because what you think it's going to look like may not be what it is, or in this case, it's 20 times better. So I ended up painting just the fronts of the cabinets and they do need another coat. I know that. So if you see a dust bunny or a streak or something in this kitchen, this is a work in progress. I still got to paint my door. I know, I know. But I wanted the black cabinets and I wanted the two-tone. I didn't want to... Like I said, the, the heartbeat of these cabinets is really overall in really good shape. And I was kind of going for the path of least resistance. In other words, I'm just gonna paint the fronts. And if I like some of the fronts and I like how it's starting to look, then I'm gonna go forward. If I don't think it looks good or if it's not enough black or if I wanna do like a marshmallow color or something like that, then I can come back and add to it. I try to go as, as impatient as I am I try to go one step at a time and change one or two things at a time because then it dictates, okay, where is the next eyesore? Or no, I don't want to go with that. I mean, I changed my mind a lot throughout this whole process. So here's where I'm going with this. So I, I had to get a new countertop. With the old countertop, then it came to down to, okay, am I keeping the old stove or am I going to get a new stove? 
because there was this huge lip. The countertop connected all the way around. Whereas, see here, I have two pieces, actually three pieces. I have this piece, this piece, and then that piece. So I was going to have to make a decision. So I went for it, finally. And what type of stove, and I'm telling you, we debated that for like six months. James is going, I mean, I debated that over and over and over. Money, style, whatever. Well, it must have been meant to be because we ordered the countertop. We got this stove, and when they were taking out the other stove, which I donated to somebody that needed it, so that was a good thing, it had been hardwired into the house. And when they took it out, they said we were lucky the house hadn't caught on fire. So... It's meant to be, people. It's meant to be. <laughs> now, the funniest comment that I get is everybody's like, why in the world have you got that hard wire up there on the cabinet in the center? Folks, here's the deal. It's very simple. These are the original cabinets. They need another coat of paint. No big deal. But that's what the original owner did with the 1975 look. And I didn't want to have to fill the holes. <laughs> Do act I didn't want to do any more work than I had to. And I thought, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. We'll paint them and see what they look like. I took the, that hardware and I actually spray painted it. And I was like, um, I don't know. And then I found those because I wanted to add some of the gold and brass, you know, flare in here. And they were, you know, not too expensive. And uh, so I added it and I like it. It's different. It, it kept with an older thing, but just updated it. So I just sprung, it, so my cabinets here, or you're looking at, you know, two gallons of paint, a lot of patience, a little bit of mess up, or a whole lot, and we just had to work with that. And then I sprung for some hardware. So when the weather warms up, this is what we did learn. Do not paint kitchen cabinets, Patera and James, unless it's very, very warm outside. Lesson learned there. Okay, so we, uh, let's see. So, oh, kitchen sink, real quick. Kitchen sink, I knew I wanted the biggest that I could get. I looked at every type of kitchen sink there is known to man, the kitchen sink, the bib, the this, the mama, the baby, whatever. And I decided, obviously, I wanted this type of insert because I didn't want to have to cut into the cabinets. No. And I, I looked at every type there is, and I like so many different looks, but I have to have something practical. I have to be able to wash cast iron in it. I have to be able to strain milk in it. I have to not care if a teenager drops something in it. So stainless steel, to be honest with you, I love stainless steel. I'd have a stainless steel countertop if I could afford it. I really, really love stainless steel. I do, I do, because there's less, I just can work and go. So I went with the biggest sink that I could get for this area. If you remember before, it was a 1975 dual, like a, like a nine inch depth type thing. So I went with that. I went with more of a rusty, rustic, oh, what's that called? The, the nickel, well, you know, uh, look there. So I just went with what I thought worked at each time. You know, one little step at a time, which brought us to the final phase just about in here. At this time, the backsplash. Okay, so this is what I bought, and I actually bought it just to play. Yes, just to play. I have looked. We have, James is on the couch over here while I film. He's behaving. And uh, I'm telling you right now, I have been all over East Tennessee in so many places looking at everything known to man, from brick to tile to... Uh, uh, tile, the, the, the metal tiles to wallpaper, and wallpaper was my last resort. Um, I've seen pictures of this from on various things online, and originally I bought one, this is called the new wallpaper, I bought one that was kind of white and had like these, almost like these trees in it, and the reason I got it is because they didn't have the brick. I really, my favorite thing overall, I like brick, I like stone, I like dark beams. I, I, I kind of like some darkness in the house, but I like for it to be with things that, you know, are still farmhouse or that were my grandmother's and whatnot. So long story short, y'all know I've had that ugly old nasty backsplash for a while because I couldn't make a decision. So I said, you know what? I'm going to get a couple of these. It may look horrible. It may not work at all. If I just get a couple of pieces up, then I'll be able to know what do we like? What do we want? What if, you know, if we have to hire somebody or get help, 
What are we gonna spend our money and time on? I actually have a barn quilt pattern that I could put here, but for now I thought let's just go with this and play and see what we can accomplish. Now, I don't know how long this is gonna last. This could, I, I could come in tomorrow morning. It was so funny because we put up the first couple of sections and the first thing we said to each other when we got up was, did it fall down? We were afraid it would fall down. It's actually stuck really, really well. I have not used extra items at this time. I know some of you have suggested some things that you can, not like Gorilla Glue or anything. Um, there's some things people suggest to kind of put on the edges. Like I said, we have gone with this because it helps us to visually see what do we like. If we, are we gonna leave this? I'm, hey, I'm gonna leave, as long as it stays, it's staying, girl. Um, because here's the thing, when I bought these, I think they've gone up a couple of dollars, but these were $32. We used a roll and a half, really. We had to cut, I say $64 is what we spent on this because we had to cut into the second one, obviously. There is some waste because you have to match it up. It literally just, you just take it off and it peels and you just peel and stick and then you smooth. Now, let me show you this too. Usually, this is sitting with these uh, on the little kiosk when you buy them and it's a, like a, I don't know what you call it. I call it a cutter and a smoother. <laughs> so it's like a box cutter and then you have this you know, uh, smoother thing. I think this was 10 or 12 bucks. I mean, it's nothing. Get it. It is the, you have to have it. The main thing that I'm gonna say is, here's my suggestion or two. If you choose to do a project with this type of wallpaper, sticky wallpaper type stuff, here are my suggestions. Now, I'm sure there's gonna be folks that, ladies especially, that comment because they've used this before, they've done projects with this, so they're gonna to add to it in the comments below, which I totally welcome. I highly recommend you have two people because the idea is, is once you get it started, as you're trying to match up the next piece, which really isn't that bad, but what you wanna do is have that person holding the other end up as you are starting to you know, literally come in and piece together the pieces every, wherever it has to match up. So they're holding it up on the other end so you're not you know, spread out and you can focus on getting that done. It's not hard at all. And then that's the main thing. Now, James and I both did this. He wants me to tell you that I did it all, which is not true. So let me tell you how he worked and I worked. So clearly you can cut and do this however works best for you but we chose to cut the pieces every time we had a next section. If we had to go around the edges, then we cut that into the piece. So James did the measuring for that and cutting in the little detail on the tabs. My job was to just try to not bug him. <laughs> and, you know, when it's time to put the piece up, I was the person that matched it up laid across the countertop a little bit here a time or two in that corner back there, didn't I? I was like, it's like, he's like, we're doing Pilates. Um, but, you know, match it up. And then I was the one that had to press and seal and smooth out any, the bubbles that started, you have to, you know, if you'd smooth it across. And then I would take the little box cutter and then I did all the trimming. He would hold up, we, you know, we had to use with, work with both tools. Once you get started with using it and you do a couple of pieces, it's very quick and easy to figure out. Obviously a large wall or where there's no cutting, except for the, maybe the top and bottom is much, much easier. But when you start having to work with corners or around edges and all of that, I'm gonna tell you right now, two people. Okay, so, so far I really like it. They have a ton of different patterns. This would be great for a lot of different, you know, there's like a washroom, this, whatever, because it allows you for a minimal budget to really update or upgrade. It's not permanent. You can still hang pictures, yada, yada, yada. And if, you know, if it only lasts a, a little while, whatever that is, a year or two, you can change it if you choose to. Whatever you choose to do, it gives you that flexibility. And James just said, he said, you didn't tell him about the floor. Okay, my apologies. My apologies. We did replace the floor. This was another debate, which again, once we decided that we were keeping the cabinets, I then could progress to what are we doing with the kitchen floor? This is what I'm saying. 
once you decide, okay, I'm keeping this, keeping that, or I'm changing this or changing that, or this is the what we're working around, which is, in our case, it is our cabinets, and I knew I wanted to paint, try black. So that was kind of like where I knew I was going from there. We simply took up the tiles. You'll see that in the original before and after picture. They were those, uh, is it laminate tiles? Laminate, is it laminate? Vinyl, vinyl, vinyl tiles, old. Um, I actually thought about trying those again. And I caught, you know, I would go and buy several samples of different things and bring it in here and put it down. But when we were having the downstairs finished, because it had to be because of the damage that was downstairs, we went ahead, we bought this flooring. It's called Blue Ridge or Blue Ridge Pine. Yeah, we got it at Lowe's. Um, this is a sm fairly small space. It is such a beautiful vinyl. What is it? No, this is a floating laminate in it. LTV. What is it? LVP. Luxury vinyl. Luxury vinyl what? Product. Product. Okay, that's kind of high tech, honey, but <laughs> you can get it at Lowe's. We had this down at the other house. We put it downstairs. We loved it so much. Uh, I thought it would go well with, you know, it has gray in it, it has brown in it, it has a touch of like vanilla in it, just like my countertop here. Remember, Dolce Vita, Formica. So everything just kind of blends. And the thing that I like about like, say this countertop or even this flooring is it doesn't box me in. So if I come back, you know, in June and suddenly I've got puff marshmallow cabinets, I can do that. So that gives me or anyone like you, that flexibility. I don't like to be in a, I don't want to be placed in a box because if I, six months go by and I don't like what it is, then I'm kind of stuck. And if you've spent a lot of money on something and then you don't really like it or it's really not you, then what you gonna do? Okay, what did I forget? Did I forget anything, James? You updated the uh, switch cover. Oh, I've updated the switch covers. Okay, and we got a new little storm door because it was about to fall off. <laughs> but I am going to keep that door. I like this door. You can't really see it it's so bright. I, I like it. We have to have natural lighting come in from both sides because, again, it's small space. So I think this kind of does it. And, of course, you know, so the, the, the somebody's going to ask about that because when I put it up last year, I got that from Amazon, the little light from Amazon. And, you know, we're just living life. And I will tell you one thing. As soon as I turn this camera off and we start cooking for Christmas here in about 30 minutes, that's why I filmed this right now because it won't look like this as soon as this stops rolling. <laughs> Guys, we appreciate you watching. We've had a lot of fun doing this. We'll continue to work with the kitchen and change things here or there because that's what we do. Women, we love this stuff. So I'd like to add a few more baskets. I've got a little bit of Nana in me. Miss Lou got me that basket. I'd like to add a few more things. So anyway, and by the way, thank you for all the Christmas gifts. I set this on the stove top. It smells so good. Looky there. This is from Marilyn May Farm. Thank you so much for your generosity and for thinking of us. All right, new wallpaper. You can get it. I got ours at Home Depot. I'm sure there's other places that carry it. Uh, you're looking at Formica. Just go one step at a time. Trust me, I was very impatient. And uh, some, sometimes I was forced to wait to do this or get that because there were so many delays with products and things over the last year. And that really proved to be the winning edge um, in terms of pulling this off. You may not, it may not be your style, but I will tell you what, we're awful happy. Thanks for joining us here at Appalachia's Homestead. If you have any questions, let me know. January's coming. I know some of you ladies are ready to start some DIY projects. We'll see you on the next video.